Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Cell. Do you ever get a moth hole in a garment or you snag it on a nail or something and you get a little rip? It's really disappointing, but it can be saved. And you can save it in a way that's practically invisible. Nobody would know the hole was even there. Currently, visible mending is a big trend. And that's when you mend your garment and you showcase off your mending with large colorful stitches. That has its place, but it's not for every garment you own and it's not for every situation that you want to wear your garment to. So this video is gonna show you how to patch a garment in a way that the patch is practically invisible. It's important to be able to mend a hole in garments because you're gonna be able to save that garment and wear it some more. You're gonna be able to save yourself some money because you don't have to replace the garment. And when you think about the environmental impact that fabric production has, and the sheer amount of clothing that's already made out here in the world, it just makes sense to be able to repair your clothes and make them last a little longer. This video is gonna focus on small holes and rips in woven fabric. Soon, I'm gonna put out a video to show you how to patch a knit garment like a t-shirt. So if you're ready, let's go. For this project, you're gonna need the garment that has the hole in it, of course, then you're gonna need some kind of fabric, and it doesn't have to match exactly because that's hard to do, um, but something in the same tonal values as maybe your garment. You just wanna be sure that the patch fabric is the same kind of weight or feel as your garment, and it launders in the same way. So one isn't cotton and one isn't silk. They have to be laundered completely different. Just make sure those match up. You also might want some Sharpie markers or some fabric markers to match up colors a little bit better. You're gonna need a friction pin or some other kind of mark that comes out of fabric. Uh, pinking shears are nice, but optional. The little tiny blade scissors are very, very handy. And the fray check could be optional as well as the pinking shears. They're nice to have, but you don't have to have them. What you do have to have, however, is fusible webbing. Fusible webbing is glue that when it, the iron hits it, it melts and bonds the fabric together. This is the Pellon 807, also known as Pellon Wonderweb. And the other Pellon product here is Pellon 725. It has a paper backing to it. It's the same exact stuff, it just has a paper backing on the other side. Of course, you're going to need an iron in order to fuse the patch to the garment. If you don't have an iron, see if you can borrow one, but you really do need an iron for this project. All right, so I have some examples or samples of holes. I got one in a solid fabric. This one is in a larger geometric-ish floral. And then of course a very busy paisley with tiny little holes in it. And then my gingham fabric. So all different types are gonna show you how to patch them all and it will blend in. First, if you have any fabric scraps, gather them. You would be surprised what matches and how it blends in. It doesn't actually match match, but it blends in enough that you cannot see the patch. If you have some exact fabric, great. If you have to go buy some fabric, you can get quarter cuts um, from fabric stores and maybe even a little bit smaller if you ask for an eighth of a cut. And I would look for something like a batik in that it has a lot of colors in one quarter cut, quarter of a yard that is. I've got greens, blues, purples here, so if I have a lot of those kind of clothes in my closet, that would be a good piece to buy. You'd be surprised at what colors will match. You wouldn't think that little strip of batik would have a blue that's solid like that, but it actually goes pretty well together. All right, let's start with the Busy Paisley print. And you know, these are two little holes. I actually had a skirt that a moth did that to. It made two little holes right next to each other, but we're gonna use one patch to patch both holes. In a print like this with so many colors, you can really use just about any color that is in that print. It's gonna blend in pretty well. You wouldn't think that red would work, but it did. If you have two shades of the same color, like this golden color, 
you can see that the darker one tends to recede a little bit better, so, so therefore it might blend in a little bit more. You just have to play around with it and see what you like. The looser the fabric, or the looser the garment, I mean, the more the patch is going to blend in, of course. So these are bigger holes in a print that is going to be a little more obvious. So I'm going to try and match up as best I can. Here I've got the dark blue and the light blue. Um, I could try the green, especially if it was in a, another part of the fabric that the hole was in. It didn't really work there. But the dark blue, there it doesn't work. But here it works because you can't even tell. that the, the flower looks a little misshapen, but it blends in nicely. So I went back to the boutique on this one because I remembered it had a lot of purples and I found a purple that matched. Alright, so here's my gingham shirting fabric that I actually made a shirt from. And this is such a basic fabric, you might be able to find some exact matching fabric at a big fabric store or even a shirt that matches it at a thrift store, you never know. If you don't have something that matches exactly, you're gonna have to go where we started before. So this fabric has navy and white, but it doesn't quite, it's a little too visible, I think. The dark blue, well, it's okay. It definitely recedes. I could use that. So then I thought I'll just try the plain white. I thought that looked good, but it could look like I had an undershirt on underneath. So that's when I thought I'll get the Sharpie and I'll make my own fabric to match this print, or in this case, this weave. I wouldn't put the garment on top of your patch like I did because you see I get some Sharpie marker ink right on the quote garment. But you could, using markers or fabric paint or something like that, make matching patch. You could make your own matching fabric to make a patch from. So keep that in mind. Just also put paper underneath your patch so it doesn't transfer to the undersurface. So now my solid, and solid's gonna be the hardest one to blend in because it is solid. This blue to me was kind of like a grayish blue, so I tried the gray, it didn't quite work. I tried some different blues, trying to find the tonal. I thought, oh, that gray actually kinda went, so I thought, oh, maybe I just need to go lighter. You wouldn't think about this dolphin fabric as something that would go with it, but there are a lot of different blues in that print, so it was worth trying. It didn't work, though. Ah, and then I remembered this batik from the beginning, and it kind of goes. It's a little dark, but it kind of matches. It could blend in from far away. This one doesn't go at all, but something I discovered, again, with the Sharpies. So it had a kind of a watercolor effect. So I put this Sharpie on, and I layered it up pretty well. It got it darker and got it pretty close. It was a little too dark, I thought, but I was really surprised how that worked. So then I saw, when I flipped it over, I saw, oh, it has the white lines in it as the fabric kind of has the white lines, the crosshatch in it too. So I thought, well, that could go, but let me just make sure that this Sharpie doesn't match it exactly. And it didn't, just on the white background, it was a little too purple. So I tried to layer it up, like a watercolor again, it was too dark. You can see it's just a little too purple. It didn't really match when I just put that one color directly onto white, but when I put it onto a lighter blue color, because the back of the fabric was lighter, it worked. So now we're gonna make the patch. You got your hole, and you're gonna have to clean up the loose threads around it. The point isn't to make the hole bigger, the point is to make the hole clean edged. You want the edges nice and clean so it doesn't have a three-dimensional look to it, because that'll make it stick out more. Your fabric patch you want to be about a quarter inch bigger than the hole, all the way around. Quarter inch to a half inch, all the way around. So it has a place to bond to, the, the patch has some room to bond to the garment. You wanna round the corners off. That'll help when laundering the garment after time. If it has um, rounded corners, it's less likely to peel off the garment. Then we're gonna get the fusible webbing and we're gonna cut it the exact same size as the patch. You particularly don't want it bigger than the patch because if you get that webbing, that fuse, basically glue, onto your iron, you're gonna ruin your iron, so don't do it. Make sure you get all the scraps up too. 
All right, if you have pinking shears, you can always cut the patch out with pinking shears. It's just less likely to fray that way, or you could use fray check all the way around the patch. However, it is optional because the bond, the glue, will keep the patch from fraying. You want to replicate the shape of the hole onto the fusible web, and look, it went through. So good thing that's a fabric type of marker, a marker that come, the mark comes off on fabric. So just, you might wanna test yours first. You're gonna cut the hole out of the fusible webbing only, not of the patch. So you're basically matching, you're making an exact match hole in the webbing. Put it on the underside of the garment, and then you put your patch on that webbing. Now we're gonna fuse it together. You, I use a press cloth, again, because I don't want to get any fusing on my iron. The directions for most fusibles is hold to the count of 10 with a hot iron. And there you go. It blends in pretty well. Good job, Mary. All right, next. All right, now we're going to do the gingham, the patch I made. Now this was a rip, so it actually needs to be uh, cleaned up a little more aggressively. Rips really do going to pull on the fabric. So get that all nice and clean. Any loose threads are gone. And we're going to line it up because remember we want this one to match exactly so you can't see it. Again, you can use pinking shears or you can just round the corner of your patch. And you'll see I'll get a lot faster on this. I figured out some shortcuts as I go along. <laughs> By the time I get to number four, I'm doing okay. So this is the paper-backed webbing. And why I didn't think about this, but you can, of course, trace the hole onto the paper of the webbing. And then you don't have to do it. But mine can, just came right apart, I guess because it's old. <laughs> so there you go. I am just going to use a pencil this time, see if that worked to make that replicate the shape of my hole. And then I'm gonna cut it out. You do wanna try and get your hole um, centered onto that fusible and onto the patch. Mine get pretty close to the edge. But there it is. I got the hole to match the hole in the garment cut out of the fusible webbing. And then I'm gonna lay it on my patch. This one again, I wanna match exactly so I'm really careful. Underside of the garment, the wrong side of the garment, and line that up. And I want to make sure, double check. Eh. Okay, adjustment. There we go. And pressing cloth, both under and over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But do it at a normal pace. Ah, we got a little fusible there. Got stuck. Now, so this time, not on purpose, but it didn't um, adhere completely. You just put the iron back on it again. It works. And now it's a nice, complete bond. It's on there for good. And it matches. I might have to fill it in a little bit more because when I cleaned up the hole, I made the hole a little bit bigger there. So, patch number three. Here we go. This time I just went ahead and did it with the pinking shears to begin with. I'm going to use my regular fusible because I like this one better. Make the fusible the same size as the patch. And make sure I get all the scraps off my work surface. All right, now I've got to, that patch is a little big for that little tiny hole, by the way. But here, look, this, I came up with a shortcut. I just put the fusible right onto the hole and I was able to trim out the um, trim out the hole quicker. That's why you need the tiny blades, the tiny blade scissors. If you have a big, big scissors, it's a little more awkward. Again, this is really getting quite simple. Just clean it up a little bit there and pressing cloth and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, oh, yes, done. Okay, the dark blue, Here we go. Make the patch so that it is a quarter to a half inch larger than the hole on all the sides. Cut out the fusible to be the same size as the patch. Use pinking shears if you have them. If not, just round the corners with regular scissors, or you could use fray check, but 
really the bond will hold the edge of the patch pretty well. Then we want to make sure to cut out the fusible from the hole. Make sure we get it matched up and fuse it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's on there. Now the paisley, the two little tiny holes together. We're going to treat it as one, we're going to do one patch because it's easier with two little patches next to each other. Same idea. Cut the patch so it's bigger than the holes together. Transfer the shape of the holes onto the fusing, the fusible webbing. Those fricks and pins are great if you don't have those or don't know about those. They come, the ink comes out with heat on the marker, on the fabric, sorry. <laughs> so I've cut out two little holes there, but what you can do, and it makes it a lot easier to line it up, is you can connect the two holes, and you can do this from the beginning, and you just have one big hole there up in the fusible. It still lines up, there's no fuse, there's no fusible webbing showing through the holes. It still lines up, it's just one big hole in the fusible webbing. Now I'm gonna fuse that down, and voila, we're done! Yay! So I've got the busy print, that really blends in well, that's a very easy to make it invisible patch. I've got the not so busy print that also kind of works. The solid, we, we matched that up pretty good. And we made our own patch to match on the gingham. We did that, remember, with a Sharpie marker. Very handy. This one also with a Sharpie marker in a different kind of way. I thought that was kind of neat. That was something I discovered while making this video. They all blend in rather well. And I think from a distance, they really would be invisible. So this is a really easy way to mend a hole in a woven garment. This is especially useful if you like to buy secondhand and vintage clothing because a lot of those come with moth holes. And if you see the moth hole before you purchase it, maybe you could point it out and negotiate a better deal. I don't know, worth a try. One word of caution though, when laundering the patched item, because the patch is not sewn down in place, you might want to wash it on a more gentle cycle and definitely might want to consider hanging it to dry instead of putting it in a hot dryer. It's the heat of the dryer that's going to soften that bond, again, melt that kind of glue like the iron did, and so that is what you want to avoid. That is what's going to peel it back off of the garment. So keep a little bit of that extra, keep a little extra fabric that you made the patch with in case you need to replace the patch down the road or in case you get a different hole in the same garment. It can happen. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.